Kapaluna uh, Hisui. Yep. Uh, would that be that wouldn't be Blood Moon then, or is that, that is not Blood Moon? A little bit of a different uh, hmm. setup there, but another strong pick nonetheless. It looks like it's going for a Fire Orb facade, but let's get right into this. They're both leading with their restricted bonds. Yes, Calyrex versus Maridon. I would be surprised if we see this lead against uh, other opponents as well here today. Other people, very popular Pokemon that people are running. But with that Psychic Surge coming into play, we're going to see that Psychic Seed get utilized as well. So that's going to be a boost to the special defense, allow the tank a little bit more, probably going to be able to use that follow me a little bit more effectively, allow Calyrex to maybe even get a nasty plot off because if Volcarona does not have any spread moves, neither does, well, Maridon has the Discharge. I believe that is a spread move, so that could threaten the uh, Calyrex a bit. But overall, if you're going to get that Follow Me off, your Calyrex is most likely going to be able to retaliate, like, get the, uh, get the Nasty Plot pretty comfortably, if it is running Nasty Plot, which it is, wow. yes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but did this indeed not override the electric terrain from the Maridon? Oh, it does! I did not even consider that! Yes, one of the elements that makes Maridon so strong is you honestly don't really see much terrain play. You might see it with Rillaboom, you might see it with this Ndidi, but overall, if you play your Maridon, you'll get your electric terrain, and it'll last for quite a while, but not the case right now. We're gonna be seeing Maridon get the terrestrialization into the Ooh. electric. We want to get as much damage off as possible. It might even just be using the Electro Drift straight into the Ndidi to try to do as much damage as possible. You don't want to end up in a situation where... It's going to be doing it no matter what now. Exactly. So whatever's happening, you're either using the Discharge or Electro Drift, and that's going to be the Electro Drift coming out into the Ndidi and trying to get as much damage as possible. No Electric Terrain, so it's going to be slightly less damage, which still hurt quite a bit. Yes, I honestly believe Psychic Seed is what's keeping this Ndidi alive here. Psychic is going to come out in response onto the Maridon, and that's going to wow. beat it down to base nothing. Life Orb, of course, playing a factor here, but all the while, you're getting some setup onto your Volcarona as well. Yeah, that Volcarona getting off the Quiver Dance is going to be absolutely massive going forward. Sure, it doesn't have an absolutely brutal matchup right now, but actually, it doesn't have any bug moves on itself right now, so it can't True. really take down that Calyrex. Or wait, it's not a Getting all confused right now, but it's all good. This is just moving so quick. Yeah. Just in the new teams. Oh, if you think you're slipping up now, you should have seen how many times I slipped up yesterday. Yeah, because <laughs> everything's moving so fast. That's the nature of the VGC format. But with these That's critics kind of coming out, you got to figure out exactly what your opponent's going to try to think about here. You could even see a switch in for any of these uh, trainers, and it wouldn't even be a bad idea, which, yeah, we're going to see them right on. It is such a fast Pokemon that you don't even need to worry about having any kind of setup as long as it comes back in. It's going to at least get one more attack off. Um, Calyx is going to protect itself, trying to call out anything that the uh, Marana might have been trying to do. Volcarona, however, is going to get that flamethrower to knock out the Ndidi. And that's another turn where Calyrex isn't hitting. Any turn where Calyrex isn't hitting is a success in your book. Exactly. Did sw getting the switch out is massive, denying the ability boost on the side of John Ulysses. It's a big play from Rowan. And now the Clefairy is out here. Going to be the supporting ah. for Calyrex this time. Yes, it's Clefairy. I was like, why would he be running uh, Eviolite on Clefairy? It's Clefable. That's the evolution, uh, ev the evolved form. Clefairy is the pre-evolved form, so that ev Eviolite is actually going to be relevant. Um, and it's still going to be a pretty tanky Pokemon, all things considered. Um, it does have those uh, helping hand endeavor as well. Since it is pre-evolved, its HP pool will be a lot lower than most others. So oh, it will do wow. significant damage to anything that it gets it off on. But with that this theory is type coming out. Yeah, this is very interesting here. Volcarona getting the double quiver dance is going to be a big oh, threat going no. forward. The switch into the Fury Graph, it was for the Foul Play that's on it. If you're not familiar True. with Foul Play, it does more damage. The more powerful your opponent is, the more boosts it has. So, what oh, crit takes down the Volcarona through two quiver dances! Wait, so what? What? what There's I, Psychic from Calyrex. Oh, okay, yeah. So I was trying to look up Psychic Terrain, and in the meantime, I look back up, and I see that Volcarona is completely wiped out by, especially, like you said, through the <laughs> Quiver Dances. That's going to be huge endeavor, trying to reduce the HP of the Furograph, and it succeeds. It's better than no damage. You're getting decent damage there, and just looking at Rowan's reaction there, might not have been expecting that because of that crit, right? It ignores all stat boosts, uh, or at least uh, defensive stats. I believe, stat, defensive stat boost. So it's going to go right through those boosts and knock out the Volcarona. At the very least now, you're going to have your electric terrain to work with. And I don't believe this Clefairy, it is running Follow Me actually. So you're not going to be able to get that electric drift onto the uh, the Calyrex unless you're, and yeah, you're, 
I can guarantee you, Furigraf is not going to be moving before your Maridon, so you can't even bank on knocking out the Clefairy with your Furigraf. But even so, if you could, you probably wouldn't be able to. He's going to switch in his uh, Maridon from... Yeah, he's going to switch in his Iron Hands off of his Maridon, which makes sense. He wanted to get the Electric Train up, so he's going to get the boost from his ability. And uh, it's going to give him another couple turns to make sure he can use that Maridon as effectively as possible to knock out this Calyrex if it ever comes down to it. Yes, Iron Hands is on the loose now. This thing's gonna be pretty fast, but will it be fast enough to try and take down this Calyrex? It's a lot of good positioning on John Lucy's, and good reaction by Rowan trying to stall. He knows his opponent's gonna use these protects, and now he's gonna be set up for the next turn. So with the protect coming out, we're gonna see the Trick Room usage. That's going to cause Clefairy, I believe, to be the fastest Pokemon on the field. Yes. Even though Furgraph, notoriously slow Pokemon. Actually, no, because this is a level 61 Clefairy on this list here. So it could actually have its speed boosted up when it gets to level 100. And not, they're going to get cut back down to 50 either way. So I believe it's going to be slower. I'm not exactly sure. I think perhaps, Furgraph might perhaps. be slower. Now, interesting plays for this Furgraph. It doesn't really have anything that's effective at all right now on the side of this iron hands nothing too great either he's in a very difficult position right now he just kind of has to brute force take down this calyrex which means he's going to be brute force take, taking down this clefairy instead which is going to afford Cal uh, calyrex at least one more turn to set up or do anything he wants to do thanks to the ev light it's going to be able to withstand that wild charge it's going to take a little bit of damage but it's going to once again it's going to buy a turn for the nasty plot to come out trick room is up so I don't know if he wanted to go for a nasty plot because he wouldn't be guaranteed to get the Astral Barrage Retaliation. He is just going to go for the uh, second Psychic here. And that's going to knock it out. I for keep forgetting it has Grim Nay, so it's boosted by about two or three at this wow. point. Definitely now, doesn't matter how much defense or resistance you have. Now I think this is a three or four boost uh, Calyrex with Life Orb too. This yeah. is going to be very hard hitting. It's going to be a double boost so far. Now he has the Gallade as his last supporting Mon on jean Ulysses. This is getting relatively close here, but it's still going to be very much in jean Ulysses favor. Yeah, there it is. There is the FF from Rowan Hall, I believe. So jean Ulysses is going to be the first one to take this set. And I really got to under I understand why he went for it there. Um, there really just is not a lot realistically you could have done on his side of the field to overcome. Um, I don't remember for sure, but I think that uh, Shadow Rider might have been full HP. I think it was it was just about not full HP, but really? it was very okay. high up there. So realistic, like it is a pretty fragile Pokemon, but I don't think you'd be able to knock it out with the discharge, especially with Trick Room up. That would have ended up having uh, uh, Furgraph would have gone first, and then Clefairy as well, or one of them would have gone first. There's just so many things that would have prevented you from being able to knock out that Calyrex. It might have even been able to get the Astral Barrage, despite the fact that it will be moving last, if not second to last. But that just goes to show the power of Trick Room there. And it, aff it afforded him even more turns to be able to last through. Otherwise, Astral Barrage, after a single boost, would have probably swept the entire team. And once again, this is something I've seen for some teams time after time. There is nothing on the side of Rowan Hall that can deal with a Terra Fairy defensive type. He has nothing to, that is super effective against Fairy. If we take a look at this, there's not Poison, there's not Steel. So those Fairy types are going to just be very, very bulky. At the very least... I believe Blood Moon would still be doing decent damage if he decides to use that. It might not be super effective, but again, you don't need to be super effective against Calyrex exactly. to take it out. It's very fragile. Um, so Blood Moon would still be pretty solid around that. Um, Whimsicott, you could even try calling out uh, a nasty plot and just send it into Encore, and then boom, you have your, um, your sweeper stuck, continually boosting itself. <laughs> um, not a lot you could do there. Volcarona honestly was the best bet there. It's just very unfortunate it got hit by that crit. Um, I feel like if it didn't, it probably would have still had a couple of turns left in it to really get there things done. But here we are going to see that Ursaluna coming out. Uh, and it's Ursaluna Hisui on the side of John. So I'm actually interested to see that. Um, I believe this might be a little bit more of a defensive tech than the Ursaluna Blood Moon. Uh, actually, no. Is it? 
Oh, this one's a lower level than the other one. So I think um, the regular Ursa Luna might have um, some more defensive capabilities. I'm not too sure about that. As a Pokemon, I don't see very often. It's always usually the Blood Moon. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too familiar with how this uh, regular Hisui Ursa Luna is going to be playing. But we're going to see the switch into the Maridon immediately. And Volcarona, I believe, is going for another Quiver Dance. Yeah, they're going to get the switch out right away here. And now we into the Maraidon, then that is an amazing play. You want to guarantee yourself that electric terrain. Last time, Indeedy just overwrote that every single time. It's a follow me. Don't think all too much is going to happen to it because I have a feeling that Volcaron is going to want to quiver dance. There it is. But what did this Ursa Luna do? It's probably going to sword stance if you're going to do follow me just by itself some time. Um, and then probably going to... Headlong go rush oh, headlong on the Volcarona. Run. Takes it out of crit. Once again, the Volcarona falls. Oh, boy. Uh, at the very least, I think that might have gone down regardless. Headlong Rush is a ground type move. It's going to be super effective against Volcarona regardless. And it, while Quiver Dance boosts your special defense, this is a physical type, physical type move. So the crit hurts, but in this case, I don't think it was the reason it uh, went down, whereas last time I think it might have been. Guts is going to be pretty valuable here on this Ursaluna as well, boosting its attack um, by 50%. Uh, I don't know if it was in play in that first turn, but it's definitely going to be now at the very least. And now Iron Hand's coming out to get the boost from the Electric Terrain. And we're going to see if it's going to be able to find any value here. It has Fake Out available, um, but with Follow Me, you're not even going to be guaranteed to get it off on the Pokemon that you want to get it off on. Although, baiting out the Follow Me could be valuable to prevent the Trick Room from coming out, which is basically what's keeping your Maridon from being valuable here. So, any turn that you can guarantee you're not going to worry about Trick Room is a turn well spent. Exactly, and now this... It's going to be very dicey. This headlong rush doing so much pressure uh, from Jean. There's so many electric types on the field of Rowan Hall. It's going to do so much, especially with the guts. No sword stance committed just yet, but we might see that come through. Or see the protect. Attack. That makes sense. It's a very smart move. Just wants to see what it's going to try to go for here. And that's going to call out the fake out. You're not even going to have to worry about um, anything in that regard either then. Ooh, the Draco Meteor going on the Galay. It is going to do a lot and takes it out. Not surprising. Not a very bulky Pokemon. And it's a very, very strong attacker over on the Maridon. That's one less Pokemon it has to worry about. But that is going to reduce the special attack by two. Basically forcing out the switch now for the Maridon. Um, he's going to have to pivot into this Farigarath as he has nothing else here. And I don't think you want to have your Maridon sitting out here without any real ability to get anything done. Yeah, no electric terrain. This is Maridon. It's kind of a sing sitting duck right now. Terra Water Iron Hand's going to try and just take out this <laughs> Ursa Luna in one clean swing. Let's see. The Terra Water is going to be... It's going to hit hard, but will it hit hard enough to take down this Ursa Luna? Furgraph making its debut here. And is it holding a seed or is it using... It is using the electric seed, so with that psychic terrain up, it's not going to get much value. Um, we're going to see the Torkoal switch out. It's going to put on the sun as well. Did Indeedy get to use Trick Room or no? I don't know. Or is this, we're still waiting. I, think so. we still I was reading waiting. the team sheets. Says. Yeah, same. I'm constantly just reading the team sheets right now to try to figure out any solutions. But this is so Terra Water. I was seeing if he had Terra Water Chill, but he is not. He's a physical attacker, so he's still going to have a lot of pressure here with this Drain Punch. It's not going to take out this Torkoal. No, not even close here. Um, but yeah, if you're there switching your Torkoal, you're probably trying to set up some kind of Trick Room play, which you're going to be able to get now. And while, of course, oh, actually, that Drain Punch, while it didn't knock down the Torkoal, this is going to be pretty significant when it comes to the Eruption calculations. Eruption went from basically threatening both of these Pokemon to, hmm, like we're in, we're in mm, territory when it comes to this <laughs> eruption. Even with the sun up, and now with this Iron Hands being water type, not a lot to worry about. Yeah, he's in a very good defensive spot here on the side of Ronal. Johnny sees though, I'm sure he has something up his sleeve setting up that sun. Maybe we'll see another quick swab. I don't know what he has up his sleeve, but it's certainly something very, very interesting. Now, as we're waiting in suspense for this match, let's see how this one plays out. Ooh, terrasalization from John. Let's see. Yeah, oh, on the Torkoal, you exactly. need to try and keep him up. Fire Terra trying to make up for that lost health. 
And Ooh. we're now, yeah, that might even be the exact difference here. I'm not too sure when heat all wave. That, but he's gonna go for the heat wave instead. That might be more damage. And uh, it's gonna be still really solid. Oh, the burn! The oh, it's not a physical attack. It's not gonna matter too much, but you'll take anything you can get, right? Remember that uh, Furograph survived on 3 HP last turn. So, or in the last uh, game. So, any damage is damage here. And this Iron Hands are gonna be doing a really good job of healing himself up. But foul play onto the Indeedy. Again, not gonna be doing too much damage in this circumstance. But the Psychic coming up, this should be pretty decent, especially with that Psychic terrain up. And again, that's just chip damage, basically nullifying the heal that it got from um, Drain Punch this turn. Exactly, nullifying it now. And this is just a war of attrition at this point. Chip damage back and forth, seeing who will fall first. Now this is Luna in the back pocket. Not gonna be doing all too much until he can be able to clear. Oh, I'm also just on. realizing that that means John didn't take his restricted. Oh, you're right, he didn't take his restricted Mon. But still, he's doing good work here, taking down the Frigoraph. But it's a very tricky situation. The Bolt Switch taking, doesn't take down the Indeed. Even good damage though. And now, going back and throw the Maraidon, right bring up the Electric Terrain. The both types benefiting from it will be up, but will that be enough to take down this Ursa Luna? What I think might be the threat here on the side of Rowan is actually at this point Discharge. I think both of these Pokemon are low enough that it could be pretty scary, especially with that Electric Terrain up. Um, discharge plus basically any follow-up from uh, the Iron Hands could be pretty solid, even if you just keep spamming out the Drain Punch. Or with now, you're going to have the Fake Out. Um, you're basically forcing Ndidi to follow me if you don't want to basically lose your turn here. You're forcing the Follow Me to come out from the Ndidi, or you're forcing out a Switch um, so that the Fake Out doesn't find any value and you're bringing back out your Ursaluna. But if you do that, then you're opening up your Ursaluna to taking a huge hit from Maridon. But I think Ursaluna is ground type, isn't it? It is, yes. I think it's ground rock. Or something, something around there. It's a rock, but either way, it's very, yeah, very strong. Normal. Jay is sending out the Ursa Luna once again, sending out the main carry. He wants to try and keep that Ndidi in the back pocket to flood out that electric terrain. As now, whoever lays down the terrain last with the one a crit on the Maridon. Both are very, very low. Wild charge doesn't affect Ursa Luna. And now with the Draco Meteor coming down, Oracle's gonna go down, but so is this electric terrain. Amazing plays from Jean. But now with that Draco Meteor coming into play, you're gonna be seeing this Maridon doing basically no damage anymore. And this is where you need your, your Maridon the most, if anything, especially if that Draco Meteor was to go into the Ursa Luna instead, that would be the situation you're looking for because you're still getting all that huge damage that you're getting from the Choice Specs. And again, it has Choice Specs, so it's forced to continue Draco Metering. Um, so thankfully, with the boosts that are in play with the Choice Specs, um, I mean, Thankfully, you're still going to be doing pretty decent damage, but I don't think you're going to be able to threaten the KO onto the Ursa Luna at full HP here. Um, but we're going to see Maridon going first to knock out... Actually, no, Ursa Luna is going to go first. He's going to knock out the Iron Hands. This is uh, more or less the game here, because uh, I think Trick Room is still up. Yeah, Trick Room, I believe, is still up in this circumstance, and that's going to be the KO going from John. Going to knock out the Ndidi at the very least, bringing it down to at least a 1v1 situation, but this one is definitely heavily favoring this uh, this Ursaluna. Definitely, and if Trick Room is still up, this Ursaluna will be acting first, so even a lucky crit might not even be on the table, but oh! Goes down. This Maradon has board. one last move in the pocket. The crits would be... Oh, oh it, it's even worse, it missed. The facade comes through, and Ursa Luna wins Jean Ulysses Serrano Alpine, the victory. Beautiful plays coming out again. We saw it yesterday before as well, where you don't bring your restricted, but you're still finding insane value off of the Pokemon that you do bring in instead. And it just goes to show Right, the restricted format, you're allowed to bring in a legendary, but the legendaries aren't instant win conditions. You know, you sack like your Calyrex Shadow there would have just gotten knocked out when it switched in from both of those Pokemon using the type or um the Iron Hands using the Wild Charge into it. It would have got knocked out. Uh, the Ursa Luna being a ground type, just finding so much value, and uh, even just defensively, it's just so much tankier. It was able to do so much more and still do so much damage 
with all of those different moves it has at its disposal as well, it was just so flexible as a defensive and offensive threat for this team. Exactly, and just John had so many good plays in there. Rowan had a very good job at keeping pace, but John was definitely the pace setter for this set. He was creating so many very difficult scenarios and mm -hmm. difficult choices for Rowan, just always pressuring with that and getting, clearing that electric terrain. And that's something I want to iterate once again, not to bring up the on once again, <laughs> but Sun is a little bit harder to get rid of, yeah. right? Because it's just Pelipper that you have to worry about when yeah. you're running the Karadon team in the latest meta. But, you know, there's so many terrain setters in the current meta. There's Rillaboom, mm -hmm. there's Ndidi. And that's basically that's, that's basically. But, but there are two very strong one. ones that we see often. You'll see Rillaboom just splashed into different teams, right? Whereas Ndidi is more kind of your team is... Uh, integrated with you'll see a lot more psychic types and stuff that will play off of the psychic terrain really boom you'll just see that on any random team and that's something you got to worry about with your electric terrain and we saw it actually mattered there it's not just a thing like oh whatever i'm still going to do my game plan the electric terrain not being present affected a couple of those interactions that might have been huge there but ultimately what i'm really taking away from these last couple games we've seen and i think we're going to expect to see some of those coming up in the next round is the value of follow me with these restricted pokemon a lot of them being so devastating with their single target moves again maridon not even being able to use really the electro drift in any effective matter because the indeedy able to tank it through with the follow me with the psychic seed high special defense it's you're not able to find those moves onto the pokemon that you really want to find them onto and another thing i pointed this out at the beginning didn't really come into play after the first set but there's very little attacking coverage for these fairy mm -hmm. types sure you can try and hit it with those neutral damage but that's uh, wasting a turn or two is absolutely imperative here and when there's still some good steel type moves in the game when we saw that one steel type move we saw the uh like iron head from that was decent brantley's yeah. uh it's good coverage yeah but other than that you, it's really the most reliable kind of coverage you have against the fairy and you don't really want to run it in most it's of the also situations. good against ice as well oh i guess yeah it is uh hey you know, the rise of the ice types, you never know. But ladies and gentlemen, well, we're getting ready for the next round. Don't go anywhere too far because the action is not too far away. So stay tuned. We'll see you guys very soon.